All right, back with part two. Um, unit two was trig functions. A little bit of review of grade 11, and uh, we sort of made it a little bit tougher than in grade 11 because we had a period change. This ended up being um, a horizontal squ squish or a stretch, and it made things just a little bit more difficult, but um, wasn't so bad. This unit was really two types of questions where one way we're uh, given a function like this and had to come up with the graph or the state the amplitude or whatever or on the other hand we might have been given a situation or a graph and have to come up with the equation that essentially those were the the sorts of things we were asked to do and here's a couple of examples uh, so this one there's a big long graph uh, equation of a graph and we're asked to graph that on that interval well how do we do this we could start with the basic cos function and, and then sort of add each piece, but we got pretty good at these that we could sort of figure out all the details, uh, like the amplitude and the period and and the the phase shift and the vertical change or the vertical displacement. And then I'm going to graph the end function only. Um, the amplitude is just the number that's in front, which is a half or 0.5. Um, the period, remember, that doesn't show up in the the equation, but this B value helps us find the period. Remember, the period is just 360 is the normal period of a trig function divided by B, in this case, 3, the period's 120. So what that means is the function that we draw is going to have to start repeating every 120 degrees. Now, uh, that never helped us very much, right? What, what helped us graph it is what I like to call the important points. Normally, the important points happened every 90 degrees. But since B is 3, we divide that by 3, and that means every 30 degrees or every tick. Every one tick, we get an important point, and that's the way we set up our scale, and that was the easiest way. The phase shift is the value in here, the D value in here, which the plus 60, remember, it's opposite when it's in the direction of X is actually left 60 degrees, or 60 degrees is two ticks. Remember, each tick was worth 30 degrees. Um, the vertical displacement is minus two or down two. Maybe the hardest thing to remember is how to set up our, our grid. Um, maybe not the hardest, I don't know. There we go. I'm going to set up my... And so the idea is, uh, maybe I'll move this over a little bit so I just got a little more room. I'm going to be moving at left 60, so I want to have lots of room. Um, remember, we sort of thought of each square being worth 30 degrees, so we always put kind of the important points on 90, 180, 270, and 360. And that would be the normal... The normal coast graph would start at one and finish off one cycle or one period in 360 degrees. Um, but this one's all messed up, right? It's been changed. It's had transformations. Okay. And so what are the transformations? Well, we got to figure out where the starting point is, and then we're going to have important points every 30 degrees. I'm going to change colors again here. Well... Um, the vertical displacement is down too. So it's kind of like the new axis, the new um, spot that we're going above and below is at minus 2. And we're going left 60, so that's 2 ticks. So it's kind of like the starting point would be over here somewhere. Now since it's a, a, a coast graph, remember a coast graph starts at its maximum, right? And since the amplitude is a half, the starting point's going to be, you know, a half a unit off its axis. There's the start point. That's the start point. Start here. And then I'm going to use my important points to figure out how to do the rest of the graph. And I know sine and cos always go high, middle, low, middle, high, middle, low, and so on. So every, in this one, it's every 30 degrees. I mean, kind of made a mess of that, but every 30 degrees. So there, 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 
there, and so on. Now, you don't have to watch me graph at all. I think you get the picture. Now, on the exam, you would have to keep going all the way to 360. I'm going to cut it off just so we can get going. And keep going high, middle, low, middle, high, and so on. Dot, 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 dot. Uh, you can finish it off. And I should label it with, you know, the equation of the graph there. But again, onwards. The next type is, this is an application question where we're given the motion of a pendulum. This was actually one of our projects, wasn't it? The um, motion of a, of, of a pendulum. It's kind of hard to read, and hopefully you can read that okay. State the stuff, write the equation. Well, the stuff is all that stuff that we had before, the period. And the period will allow us to get the B value. You know, it's kind of like these things are what we want to find um, in this equation. And notice, is this a sine curve or a cos curve? Well, there's the kind of the middle point, and it starts at its middle point. This is a sine curve, so it's going to look like this. Right, where we've got to calculate all this stuff. Uh, C is the vertical displacement, D is the phase shift, and we can start doing this. Well, where's the starting point? Right there, two and a half, right? Well, which, which of these is that? It's this one. 2.5 units. So that means this value up there is up 2.5, no problem. Um, the peer, the amplitude, A, well, how big is the, how big are the bumps? Well, and it starts at 2.5 and, and gets up to 4, so that's 4 subtract 2.5, that's 1.5 units. The period, it repeats itself, it looks like every 3.6, so the period is 3.6, but Where's what's the B value? Well, remember, 360 divided by B is the period, right? In the last example, this ended up being 120 because B was 3. So how do I solve this? Well, cross multiply and divide. 360 divided by 3.6 is B, which means B is 100, believe it or not. The phase shift. Phase shift is how much I've moved left and right. And I can tell that, um, if it's a sine graph, is where this middle point is. And it hasn't moved at all. So the, the phase shift is zero. And I can write now the equation of the sine graph. B was 100. Um, and D was... Zero, so I'm just going to leave those brackets off. I don't need any brackets, actually. And plus 2.5 for the vertical displacement, and there's your equation. Nice. Essentially, that was it for Chapter 2, those those problems. And there's bits and pieces of other things we could ask you, but uh, that's typical. Uh, the third unit was brand new stuff on vectors. Almost all the stuff was was brand new, vector quantities and scale diagrams and components and adding, subtracting vectors and, and solving. All this was new. Very important to do this test again. Okay, All this stuff was new. And some of you did poorly on this test. Maybe the worst test of the year. Do that test again. Here's a typical example. Um, Yasmin and uh, Marie are playing in a soccer game. Yasmin kicks the ball 30 meters down the field parallel to the sideline. And then Marie kicks the ball 20 meters farther at an angle of 38 uh, degrees to the sideline. Determine the direction and magnitude of the resultant displacement. Whenever you hear that, you know you're talking vectors, right? And remember, the whole idea of vectors is this directed line segment business. Now, this question never asked you to do it, but I, but I drew a scale diagram. Scale diagram. So... I'm going to have protractors and rulers available for, for you to do a scale diagram. There's Yasmin's kick. And notice, I'm pretending the field is, we're going this way. We're going up, up the screen. But you could have th thought of it left to right. Often it'll give you a direction. So Yasmin kicked it 30 meters this way. That's 30. Marie kicked it 20 meters at an angle of 38 degrees uh, to the sideline. So that's actually measured 38 degrees. And what's the result? And well, remember,
The whole thing about vectors is you draw them tip to tail. And I start at the first tip of the first vector. And I should be using a ruler here, but you know, we want to get going. This is the result. It starts at the tip and then the, the uh, sorry, starts at the first tail and ends at the second tip. These two kicks were equal to this blue kick, right? This is called the result. And how do we find the result? Well, we find the magnitude of the result. Notice uh, we don't have any angles in this. This is this 30 here, by the way, is kind of misplaced. This 30 here, I'm going to erase it, is actually this distance, right? That's the 30 meters that the first kick was. Um, so we don't have any angles, but notice that this angle was 180. This is not, uh, 38, so this is 142 in here. Well, notice I've got no angle side pair. I'm using the cosine. So I find the magnitude of the resultant using the cosine law. And this is why I didn't do any trig examples because we knew that they'd come up again in vectors. Cos of the angle that's between them, 142. This goes into the calculator all in one step. And that gives me about 2245 decimal whatever. Who cares? But remember we got to take the square root. And so that distance is 47.4 meters about. And notice that I could get out my ruler and, and use my scale if I wanted to check that. And that's a great thing to do on an exam. Uh, the, the additional little pain about vectors is that we also have to find the direction. we got to find the direction there. So um, we want to find an angle. Now we've got an angle side pair. We're going to use the sine law. And notice, whenever we use the sine law, we're a little bit worried about the ambiguous case. Angle side pair. Angle side pair. Uh, 47.4. Cross multiply. Sine theta is 20 times that. Oh, sorry. 47.4 that ends up being put this this part all into your calculator that ends up being um, 0.26 we want to do the inverse sine of that this is 0.26 that ends up being 0.26 inverse sine of that is about that angle is 15 degrees and then you got to take a good look at your diagram, make sure it makes sense that that's 15 degrees and not an obtuse angle. This looks fine, doesn't it? So um, the result, result, oops, is 47.4 meters at an angle of 15 degrees to the side. Remember, often our, our angles had some sort of direction on them. Like, like if that's north, this would have been north 15 degrees east. Or on a bearing, it would have just been 15 degree bearing, right? And there was a couple of ways to measure angles with these, with these questions. Okay, and you can kind of choose which one. All right. Good. That's it for... Units 1, 2, and 3. The next one is on exponential functions.